by God, the most famous and probably most powerful message that Jesus the Christ ever teached or taught. Matthew chapter 5, the famous Sermon on the Mount. My God, you could stay in this sermon. You could read it. It's incredible. These words that he spoke when he went up on this mountain. Went up on a mountain. People would crowd Jesus. The crowds were getting so large. Many times he would have to borrow Peter's boat and go out in the water because people were thronging him. Frocklet, fro you know, getting around Jesus, Holly, the crowds, the multitudes had to go out on the sea or go up on a mountain. Now, listen to this Matthew chapter 5. After seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain. Many times the Lord will call us to the mountain, the mountain of the Lord, Zion is the mountain of the Lord. The Lord told John, come up here to a higher place, for I must show you things which are to come. In Revelations 4, Jesus took Peter, James, and John to a high place. It's something about being on a mountain. You have a different perspective because you're at a different height. We've got so when you go up on the mountain of the Lord, your eyes are open. And you are above the warfare. You're above the natural. Come on, guys. It's time to go to a higher place now. I'll finish this in a moment. If you're new, please subscribe. Also, I'm live Mondays, 9 p.m. Eastern, live stream YouTube. Also, Thursdays, 8 p.m. live Zoom. I will pin the ID and passcode in the comments. The ID for the Zoom is 513-302-8285. The passcode is capital A, capital Q, lowercase a, 26 capital Y. The Sermon on the Mount. Here we go. Hallelujah. And he went up on a mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Everybody didn't come to him. His disciples. Then he taught his mouth then he opened his mouth and taught them saying blessed are the poor in spirit he wasn't talking about people that were poor in the natural wasn't saying you don't have a lot of money in the bank or in your pocket or have a nice car or a nice he was talking about people in the spirit that were bankrupt or needed to be you know enlightened hallelujah for theirs is the kingdom of heaven jesus 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 Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they'll see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted. For righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Verse 11, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice, be exceedingly glad, great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who went before you. You want rewards in heaven? You want to be blessed after? Don't look to be popular, fit in with the, the clique, the crowd, the crew. Many young people sometimes want to be part of the clique, the crowd, the crew. They want acceptance. You'll never be accepted in this antichrist world beast system. You'll never fit in. Stop trying to. You're not called to fit in, but to stand out. Jesus is saying, don't fit into this system. Blessed are you when you stand for me. When you stand for me, I'll stand for you. Stephen in the book of Acts stood for Jesus as he was getting stoned. The Bible says Jesus stood and was watching Stephen. As he was getting martyred, my question to you is, it says, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you. Are you being reviled and persecuted 
not because if you're rude, crude, or obnoxious. I'm talking about because you stand for Christ. People hate you. I could tell sometimes people, once I preach the gospel to them, sometimes, not everybody, sometimes with certain, everything changes. They were my friend. They liked me. I chilled with them. At the, all of a sudden, I preach. They got something rises up. They hate me. And it's not them. It's the spirit. It's an antichrist spirit that reviles and despises you. If someone's not called to Christ, and they're not predestined. They can't come. The Bible says, oh, unless the Spirit draws them, they can't be saved. You can preach the gospel, but we don't have the holes in our hands. We didn't die for no one's sins around here. Hallelujah. So, my God, what a powerful message, Matthew 5, the Mount of Transfiguration. If you're new, please subscribe. The Lord bless you guys in Jesus' name. Amen.